All right, we're back with another video. So this video is just going to be a quick little bridge video just to kind of like clean up a little bit of things and just to make sure that our development environment is efficient and it's going to work well when we develop. Because obviously right now, if I want to make any changes, uh, the only way to get those changes to actually work is by manually uh, exiting from the process, right? You'll see that right now our console, you can see that there's just this cursor, nothing's really being logged or nothing's happening. I can actually exit this by doing control C. And if you're on Mac, I think you, you would do a control C as well or commands. I'm not too sure. I haven't used Mac for a while, but uh, you can see that I exited the process. Okay. And I would have to rerun the command again in order for my changes to be reflected. Now this can be very tedious. And luckily there's actually a program called NodeMon. And what that does is it watches the files for changes and whenever something has changed in the file in the folder it's going to re restart the entire project for you so let's go ahead and install nodemon by typing in npm i uh, i'm going to do hyphen d so that way this installs as a dev dependency so th so that way um uh it's for dev only right because we're only going to use nodemon for development mode uh so let's just do that okay and you'll actually notice that if you look in the bin folder inside node modules, you'll see nodemon, the binary is over here. Okay, so if you don't have nodemon installed, what will happen is when you actually try to run nodemon, it will tell you that nodemon is not an, in, is not recognized as uh, as an internal command. Okay, but if you have it installed locally, okay, so I have it installed globally, so that's why that command worked. If you don't have installed globally, uh, you can install it locally, which I recommend because there might be different versions of Nodemon, right? I would recommend installing it locally. And the way that you can actually um, run it locally is by just typing npm. I think it's, uh, if I remember correctly, it's npm Nodemon, I think. Actually, wait, I'll show you. I'll show you real quick. Uh, what, what you could do is you can set up a script. I'll set up a dev script. Actually, I'll call this start colon dev. And then what I'll do is I'll use the nodemon binary and I'll pass in the path to the file I want to execute. And so when you run these NPM scripts that you set up, uh, so for example, if I want to run this start dev script, I would type NPM run start dev. And what will happen is it'll use the local nodemon binary. Okay. So instead of just typing in nodemon, the path to the file all the time, I can just type npm start dev or npm run start dev sorry run start dev and then it would execute that script all the time for me okay now watch this if i do control s if i save you're going to see that it's going to say restarting due to changes okay every single time i modify something if i remove this you're going to see now it's going to give me an error saying that an invalid token was provided. So this is going to speed up development, okay? So that's the first thing that I want to address. Another thing that I want to address is our bot token just literally living inside the source code. You should never store your bot token uh, in the actual code file itself. When it, anything that's sensitive, you should never store inside the actual code file itself. Now there's a couple ways that you can actually store your bot token. What you can do, and what I think is the most secure way to do this, is uh, if you want to set it as an environment variable on your actual operating system, I think that's a great way to do it. If you don't want to do that, you can also just use a JSON file, uh, or you can use a .env file. So for example, you can use a .env file, and I'll just do bot underscore token. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just uh, do tutorial bot token. Because actually on my computer, I do have a token called bot token, I think, or Discord bot token. So I don't want to conflict this because what we're going to do is we're going to install a package called dot env. And it doesn't actually override variables that you have set on your operating system. It's only going to load them in to memory temporarily. Okay, it's never going to override existing variables on your operating system. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and just take this token. And I'm going to uh, save it right over here. It's going to treat all of these envir en environment variables as a string anyways. Okay, now we're not done yet. What we need to do is we need to install a package called .env. And I'm also going to install this as a dev dependency. Okay. All right, cool. So now that it's installed, what we can do is we can go ahead and up top over here, 
I can import. Actually, let me do this over here. I'm going to import from .env. I'm going to import the uh, config function. And I'm going to call this config function all at the top. And what we'll do, what it will do by default is it'll look for the .env file and it will just load up all of the environment variables that are defined in this file into memory. Okay. So for example, uh, let me just go ahead and show you the before and after. So how do you reference environment variables? Well, you can actually reference them and I'll log this real quick. You can reference environment variables by referencing process.env and then the name of the environment variable. So in our case, the name of our environment variable is going to be tutorial underscore bot underscore token. So I'm just going to paste that over here. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and just remove this config function call real quick. And I'll show you what it logs in the console when I run the script. Okay. You can see that it just says undefined. And that's because we're not invoking the config function okay you need to make sure that you invoke this config function at the very top so that way any environment variable that you use it's already been loaded in already so now you can see that if i restart the app you can see that the token is actually being logged because it's been loaded because we call the config function so now instead of actually storing the actual token in a variable that's living in the source code we have it in an environment variable now, okay? So what I can do is I can reference token, And then now, instead of actually having the raw token stored as a string in our source code, it's actually stored in a secretive file, okay? And now if you're using git, uh, you would want to, uh, you would want to add this to a, you'd want to add the .env file to a git ignore. So that way, if you, uh, if you wanted to like, you know, stage any changes, if you wanted to commit them and push them to a public repository, uh, all the, you know, sensitive information like the bot token is not going to be uh, in the source code itself. Okay, so uh, you can see that right now our bot is actually logged in. Okay, and everything's working great. So I just wanted to make a quick video showcasing to you how we can one speed up development by using Nodemon and two keeping our uh, bot token uh, secret in an e in a .env file. Again, you can also just use a JSON file, and you can just import that, and then just reference it as uh, an op as as a property. That's also fine too. Just make sure you don't uh, just make sure you don't uh, commit that JSON file to GitHub. The reason why I prefer environment variables is because environment variables. Um, you can set them on the environment, like the operating system. Let's say, for example, if I'm deploying my application to, uh, uh, let's say, an Amazon Web Service uh, server or DigitalOcean server, I can set the environment variables on that server. And instead of having to just, you know, download the JSON file, it will all be set on the environment, on the actual operating system. Okay. I personally like environment variables better than uh, using a JSON file, but, you know, it's, it's personal preference. It's really up to you on how you want to do things. Okay. But anyways, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.